I'm Stephen Foskett, organizer of the Tech Field Day events, and the what you're about to watch here is a presentation where uh, Rubrik is going to be presenting to a panel of delegates from around the world. These folks specialize in enterprise IT technology, and they are here to ask questions and discuss and learn about the technology. If you're interested in learning more about this event, you can find out by going to techfieldday.com. And if you enjoyed this video, you can find a lot more at youtube.com slash techfieldday, or just use the Google. Is everybody energized, ready to roll, excited? Now, if you've seen me do events in the past, by the way, my name's Chris Wall. I'm the chief tech evangelist at Rubrik. So I have to introduce myself multiple times. It's kind of weird. Um, if you've seen these presentations from Rubrik in the past, you know that we like to keep it fun and funky. And so I was monitoring the Twitters yesterday. And Eric Wright, if you're watching, I saw your tweet. He said, dear every single vendor, please stop calling your stuff game changing. So to make sure that I don't do, <laughs> I, I don't know how that happened. Uh, yeah, there we go. So we got out of the way. If you're playing a bingo game, that's the free square, basically. Uh, we'll make sure to use plenty of other, wow, it's like paparazzi here. Everybody loves, <laughs> apparently snark is embraced by TFD. We good? All right, cool. Uh, but seriously, uh, the beginning part of all of these videos is like, hey, what's the problem? So I'm going to describe the problem. I apologize for that. It's going to be short and sweet. I think I have four total slides. I think we all know the problem of uh, why backup sucks. So this is the spiel for those that really have never seen Rubrik before or just aren't living the daily pain that is data protection. Uh, so I've got a diagram here. And just to distill the point down to its base elements, backup has traditionally sucked. right? And that's because it's this complex architecture that really hasn't changed for a very long time where you take all these pieces and parts in the software world, you combine them with these other pieces and parts in the storage world, and you turn that into backup. Right? That's just acquiring data and moving it around. And I felt like it was like being a blacksmith where you were forging you know, this small architecture or a small data center to protect a larger data center. Uh, no fun. I know back in the 2006, 7 era, we saw uh, some, some changes in that particular model because deduplication was added and disk was added. Yay. Uh, but largely, the actual architecture didn't do very much. Right? So that's where Rubrik tries to differentiate itself just a bit here and that we say, let's take all of those components, let's bake them in the software, let's put it into an appliance, and let's build a scale out system. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, you're going to have uh, hypervisors or physical servers, which I'll talk about here in a bit. Uh, they're running in your awesome data center using hyperconverged or just converged, or you're old school and you're like, I like building servers by hand. Because that's still, like Ethan agrees with me, building servers by hand is kind of fun still, right? It's all right, yeah. Uh, so that stuff's running in your data center. You deploy any number of rubric appliances. We call them a brick. It's just rubric without the RU on it. In there, all the software is baked, ready to roll. You IP it, give it some credentials. Uh, let it investigate your environment, and then we'll ingest all of that data based on policy rather than backup jobs. Uh, so that's all going into our appliance, which scales out, dedupes, compresses, etc. cetera. Uh, and then from there, it's really all about the fact that you can recover an application itself instantaneously. It's about 30 seconds from start to finish to bring the entire virtual machine or physical components back online. You could do single file restore, folder restore, whatever it is that you uh, desire, either in the box or in an archive location that's off premises versus on-premises. Do I have to say on-premise one time just to fill in another square on your bingo thing? Oh, no. Premise. <laughs> Premise. There we go. Uh, so you recover stuff really quickly. You can put that data really wherever you want, whether it's object store, cloud store, file store, whatnot. And it just gives you this ability to use a Google-like search engine to find and recover data. Right? So that's, that's our spiel. These are the three things I really like about it. I've distilled it into um, my three most favorite pieces of the stack and really kind of why I joined. You know, it was kind of weird to leave. Uh, I was working where Eric Shanks is working. Actually, at the same time, we work in the same place. And uh, I did not like working with him so much, I went to work for a backup company. <laughs> That's a, oh. <laughs> Don't worry, heart for you. We all want. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just kidding. I like him a fair bit. Uh, so first was, first was the thing that I think harp, is harped on by backup companies a lot, like protection, right? I can ingest that's really all, been all about how fast can I move data from one place to the next. And some things that I think are really interesting about Rubrik is that the way the protection is applied, uh, handling things like stunning with highly transactional applications has been solved, making sure that the backups are application consistent rather than just being crash consistent, that they handle the mobility of the workload. I think those are all interesting pieces, as well as using policy to manage that. But protection, to me, isn't like the coolest part. It's really more about management. You know, I've always been very attracted to automation, orchestration, working with APIs, et cetera. And so the fact that you're literally building these constructs called policies 
and there's nothing else to do. You don't configure the storage, you don't configure you know, what the actual data stream needs to look like. You don't have to, all the nerd knobs that you typically have to deal with are gone. So it's really just build policy, apply that policy, and you're done, and you're using a RESTful API or a graphical interface using HTML5 to do it. So I think that's awesome, because managing data at scale is not something you can do. Backup jobs, it's just not gonna work. Right, and then recover, which is often like, no one tends to focus on that, which I thought was weird. It's like, we can back up your stuff super quick, put it in a tape and put it in a vault, and you'll never see that again. It's like, that doesn't, that's not very cool. We're actually, uh, in my last, comp well, a couple companies ago, we were putting about 300 or so tapes a month in there, and I remember asking the question, like, how do you, how do you restore this stuff? And they're like, we don't. <laughs> Why are we doing this? It doesn't make sense. So, you can get visibility to all the data, but you can also restore it. You know, it's not actually going into some black box somewhere that you can just never touch again. On an LTO, you know, imagine trying to restore from an LTO one or LTO two tape these days. Good luck. Maybe you can talk. The computer science museum is down the street. You can go ask them for a tape reader. So that's, that's the problem slides. We're done with that. Cool. You guys seem less happy about that than I thought you would. I figured, you know, the fact that I got it down to five minutes would be kind of cool. So it's like, what's next? What's the answer to life, the universe, and everything? Right? So that's where with Rubrik, we're going to talk about our third generation release. I'll make sure to cover. There's a lot of demos in this, but realistically, I want to highlight the most recent update uh, and release that we did called Firefly. It's not this Firefly, which I wish it was. I really hate Fox for killing this show. It's a great show. It's this Firefly. Right, so let me talk about that. Cool. Any Joss Whedon fans in here? All right. Wow. So many hands raised. You can't see it, but trust me, there's like everybody, basically, except for a few. A few people that we'll talk to you later. The beatings will commence. Right? So with Firefly release, to back up just a bit, we started with VMware virtualization as our primary uh, source for data, like things that we want to protect and back up, because it's everywhere, right? You know, start with the, the big dog in the data center. But then we said, all right, we need to tackle some physical workloads, uh, some bare metal workloads. We used our customers to really drive some of the decision points there. Uh, so Linux was a big one that came up quite a bit for folks that are doing various application tiers, web middleware, et cetera, on their Linux boxes that are not virtualized. Um, so that's one of them. The other one is that we tackled physical Microsoft SQL Server. Now when I say physical, it could be bare metal, it could be a virtualized instance of it, and we're just talking to the SQL uh, application itself. Uh, so the actual platform is largely irrelevant but we're talking natively to Linux and natively to Microsoft SQL to do database backups. Those are handled by the same policies that I mentioned briefly a little bit earlier. And don't worry, we are gonna do a live demo of all of these things. So there's no video recordings, there's no smoke and mirrors. It's all running on my Surface Book because Microsoft makes an amazing product. So there's no Mac in my warehouse, my, my house. So, so. Hold on, all right, we're good. Uh, we introduced Rubrik Edge, which is our virtualized appliance. So a lot of people are like, hey, can I just run the software? Because you say that the hardware doesn't really matter. It's commodity off the shelf uh, hardware. Uh, and absolutely. So we have an Edge appliance that you can deploy into those smaller sites for today to capture data in a remote office, branch office kind of situation using the same policies, just extending that to other places. And then finally, the way that we actually write the data and protect it inside the platform has been changed from a mirroring scheme to an erasure coding scheme. And that question that usually comes up from there is, how does that process work? Because in other products, especially in storage, it meant like head swap or stand up new piece and then migrate data over. You don't have to do that. We'll, miss, we'll just make sure that new data coming into the system when you install the third generation software release is erasure coded. And as a background job, we'll just go through any data that was mirrored and move it over to erasure coding. So pretty straightforward. Question so far? It's gonna get nerdy, don't worry. With the edge, can you uh, replicate that back to like your you know, data center? Absolutely. Yeah, one of the biggest use cases for Edge, uh, and I'll show you a customer that's, that's doing that today, is uh, they are putting it out to multiple sites that both replicate into the primary data center as well as cloud out to an archive location so that they don't have to waste the bandwidth to kind of double hop. Right. So can go both directions. Cool. All right, so this is what the architecture ultimately starts looking like. The earlier slide just had the virtual. Here we've got SQL servers and penguins, I mean Linux, running on bare metal. Um, and then you've got all of this crap that's down there, that's the old backup stuff, and then you go, poof. I mean, there's a little bit more than that to it, but you know, or largely, it's, it's a PowerPoint thing. Like, poof, you, you, you largely decom that. Uh, you might mothball some of it and just you know, uh, reduce the licensing from it, but ultimately, you don't need any of these components. You don't need proxy servers, backup servers, databases. It all goes away, it builds into an appliance, and then you can choose to keep any amount of data on-premises, with an S. Uh, I just, I, on-premise thing really bothers me for some reason. So I really like to hammer the fact that it's on-premises. 
uh, into the box locally. That's usually like 30 days or 60 days or some number like that. And then you can plug into any one of these partners that we work with here for cloud, file, or object store to get the data either somewhere else in the data center or out to a cloud. Colo, we have MSPs that provide the frequency <coughs> service, et cetera. Right? So it goes any, uh, anywhere in those locations based on policy. Meaning that as you build this out, the policy dictates the security, the RPO, the RTO, who can get access to the data, how long it's retained, where it moves, et cetera. And then all these use cases become available based on the policy. The most common and prevalent use case is I want to provide backup and recovery to my customers, internal or external. But there's a lot of other things you can do with it, including disaster recovery because we're replicating the data to a different data center, uh, potentially just bringing up applications inside your data center very quickly, as well as copy data, man data management, uh, pre-prod testing type workloads, et cetera. Cool. And then I love this little guy here, the Swagger uh, API. We have a phenomenal API. Uh, we actually consume the API as a primary customer ourselves. So everything I show you in the graphical user interface talks to the RESTful API. Uh, it's fully extensible, it's fully explorable. We offer examples, et cetera, and we largely use the Swagger uh, uh, open source project and we've contributed quite a bit back to it as well. Uh, so that if you want to use you know, Puppet or Ansible or something like that, no problem, they all, they all talk REST. So what does your data center end up looking like? You've got headquarters location in a lot of cases, but you know, one or two or however many bricks you need in that particular environment, protecting your physical and your virtual workloads. We can then extend that out to a DR site, actually with nothing more than an IP, username, and password. We set up replication between the two sites, and that's at a per policy granularity. So you can choose what replicates and for how long or not based on the individual policies, as well as making sure to ingest or cloud out or object store out your edge sites uh, using the rubric edge virtual appliance. Right? So that's the holistic view of the data center. Cool, last slide. This one, just summary, things happen, it's all good. Right on? Are you happy? Is there like furious tweeting going on? I feel like I need like a tweet board Always. hashtag right here. So I'm be like, oh no, what's going on? Cool. Thank you. All right. I'm going to switch gears just really quick. Uh, I don't want to toot the rubric horn too much anymore. I think like you kind of have an idea of what we're doing here. And we're going to go deep into some demos. And I've got some amazing engineers here. They're going to talk about what the product does. So I wanted to switch gears this time around and talk a little bit more about the horridity <clears throat> of, I just made up that word, of uh, like this kind of world. So this is kind of like TSM to me. Uh, just to, you know, like nobody likes TSM, so I can make fun of it, right? <laughs> and let, do, do people like? Do we have like people with I love TSM <laughs> tattoos in here or something? Like, I have like the TSM heart with like the broken heart thing. This TSM, or like where they scratch out the name, like Petunia, scratch that out. Vanessa, <laughs> scratch that out. Uh, so these kind of engineer-driven legacy applications that uh, I don't know. This is this is literally an, uh, an example of an engineer-driven design. Uh, so that's like the, the old, old school. The TSM, like everyone's replacing that. But even somewhat of the newer school players, it's like, look at all these knobs we give you. You can control everything. And it's kind of like, really? Do I want that many options? Like, shouldn't the fabric that I'm buying and, and installing with a new product be intelligent enough to figure all that out for me? I, I can't do that at scale. It'd be like having the entire city of San Jose running with one traffic cop you know, directing traffic. That's not going to work. You don't have that kind of time to manage data at scale across, you know, so many control points. So with Rubrik, really the goal is simplicity. Because I feel like a lot of people are trying to build this next-gen environment, cloud or cloud-like environments, and they're getting to the point where backup enters, it rears its ugly head, like, oh, we got to protect this stuff. And they're like, yeah, I guess we should do that. And they go to automate something like TSM or even the newer stuff. And they're like, well, you have to build out the storage architecture, and then you have to present the storage in a particular way, and you have to build out logical barriers around everything. It's like, well, isn't that the problem that we had before? Shouldn't we have something that's intelligent enough to solve all these problems based on what's going on? And so I, I pulled out a few examples here of some of my uh, more vocal customers, people that are on the Twitters and whatnot, and what they're doing, and the use cases that they selected for Rubrik, because we have a lot of customers all over the world that just, they're really excited about Rubrik. They really love what's going on, and they're very vocal about it how much they like it. So obviously, something's going right for them. Uh, so Cloud Italia, uh, a rather recent addition to our family, is uh, doing all of our services through the API. They're not even really using the interface at all. It's all API-driven uh, control of the rubric stack. So they're doing some really fancy stuff uh, to provision data via the API. We've got Driscoll's. If you've ever bought like strawberries and blackberries and whatnot in your market, that's them. Like I didn't notice it until they were a customer. And then I looked, and I'm like, every one of these has Driscoll's on them. I just, it just never, you know, I just went to buy blackberries. Um, so they completely destroyed tape. They don't use it anymore. They're using cloud out instead of that. Uh, the third one is Langs down in Australia. Uh, they are 
leveraging the API, they actually overcame a ransomware attack because of Rubrik. So that got a lot of press because um, they have a pretty extensive uh, VDI or EUC deployment. And someone got in there, got phished, and some, uh, some ransomware software got installed on the desktop, got into the file server, started encrypting all their stuff. They had an alert saying, there's a lot of change going on in the file server. What's going on? They, they killed the instance and then realized they had a bunch of encrypted uh, files, and they actually queried Rubik to say, can you put them back in their original state? Uh, and we were able to do that in about an hour uh, to get all the, the data back. Uh, and then finally, Wabash um, has a great video out there where uh, they had a lot of stun with Microsoft SQL and Microsoft Exchange. And stun is where when we go to quiesce and grab the data off the application or uh, through, the, through the server to talk to the application, the IO freeze point where we try to get the data, flush it, and then grab a consistent piece of uh, data off the application was timing out or causing issues with the application. Right? So they're using Rubrik, and they don't have any stun issues anymore. And they've deployed our robo appliance, the Rubrik Edge. So we've got a couple examples here. Some shout outs to Steve and the rest of them. There's their Twitter handles in case you want to like see if I'm full of crap. So they're all on the Twitters. I'm sure they'd love a, a shout out as well. So like, hey, is Chris for real? Or maybe they're doing hashtag TFD12. But uh, you're all awesome. I love you. Cool. Uh, so, but besides that, the, the market's taking a lot of notice. Like, uh, we've got uh, Best of Yum World. Uh, we've got all these other things that are on here. I don't know if, as a blogger, you care all that much, but I'm certainly proud to be part of a company that gets recognized in so many different places. You know, even Gartner, like, oh, I never thought I'd have a slide with Gartner on it that I'm presenting. That feels a little dirty, <laughs> <laughs> but not too dirty. <laughs> in fact, uh, when we started, uh, when I started with the company, about two quarters in, this is my favorite, uh, this, this Piper Jaffe report comes out there, a firm up in uh, New York, I believe, that tracks the channel and like who you're winning to, who you're losing to. And our second quarter of selling, so the, the, the right bar there was our second quarter being in the market. They were surveying people and like, all right, you're trying to sell Cobalt and you lose, who is it to? And they're like, 25% of the time it's rubric after two quarters of being in the market. So I was like, well, somebody's liking what we're doing. And these are the folks that we're typically displacing. You know, it's not just the TSMs of the world, although I think everybody's trying to eat that lunch. You know, we've got a number of other incumbents that uh, a customer will bake it off and see just how much better it can be. Not only the technology is better, but it's a better model from a price perspective. <coughs> I think you have to achieve both. Right? So the OPEX and the hard uh, capital expenditures are good. I uh, would be remiss if I didn't uh, bring up the fact that since we talked last time in February, we have had our C round. So we're at $112 million of funding to go out there and basically build a giant public company. Uh, that's our goal, right? So we're trying to trying to go crazy. We talked to uh, three of the founders of the last generation of backup and recovery, you know, Veritas, Data Domain, and Semantic. Said, hey, before we actually started the company, is this a good idea? Is it insane? What do you think? And they're like, that's a great idea. And then like the fry holding the money, like, shut up and take my money. And they all wrote checks to invest in the company uh, before it really even had a product. Right? So we've got uh, three major VCs as well as uh, a number, number of individual contributors mm -hmm. to the company. Okay. So in closing, we think we've got some pretty cool stuff to show you today. We're trying to be this, uh, we, we're one of the fastest growing enterprise uh, infrastructure companies that exists. Uh, we're very proud of that. Uh, we think we have a very differentiated product. What we show you today will hopefully reinforce that. Um, got a lot of money to go out there and make sure that we can grow very, quite large and build something that you can rely on and trust because backups don't go away very quickly. Right? They're going to be around for quite some time. And we're looking to build that large, long-lasting public company. That is the end of the introduction to Rubrik. <laughs>